Hi everyone, welcome to um, a video. I have spent this morning making a chart to help photographers. Um, I suppose this isn't just for new photographers, um, but a lot of photographers will understand it. But if you don't understand it, I've made this chart. Now, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit so we can... Just hang on. Right, okay, so you can see... I've put the camera settings at the top and then we've got shutter, aperture, ISO and power. Now, why I've made this, because I think it's so, and, and I can email you this, all you've got to do is just ask for it and I'll email you it. Or I'll put a link up somehow so you can download it. Um, I did it because I think it'll help photographers understand, instead of just like, I've, I've been out with photographers before and this is why I've done this chart and we've they're using the camera and they get really good pictures they know what they're doing they know how to get good pictures but they don't actually understand these numbers now one understanding these numbers makes a huge difference when you're going to use flash um, but for this video I'll include the flash next and we're going to actually leave flash we're going to leave this column out of it when I do a quick little explanation of how it works but basically all these numbers are, if you look at the bottom it says all numbers in one full stop increments so that's from that 1.8 to 1.15 if it's a stop from 15 to 30 if it's a stop and then the same on the aperture the same on the ISO and the same on the flash power but we are going to ignore the flash power just for today obviously if you download this chart then you'll have it um, and and as you can see it really does help um, it helps especially because basically once you've got yourself an exposure and let's say for instance I'm going to leave the flash out of the equation let's say we this is an exposure here with we're at ISO 400 f4 60th of a second and we need to go to 5.6 because we need a slightly better depth of field because we're going to do a little group shot now not understanding the numbers is going to put you in the shit straight away because if you go to an f5.6 which which is here which and if you read here it says smaller number less depth of field and more light that's the smaller number and then it says larger number more in focus less light so if we go to a 5.6, which is a larger number, we'll get more in focus. Now, I know this is pretty basic what I've put here, but it will help people. And But I'll get less light. So if I go to a 5.6 from F4, say I was in AV, what will happen is my shutter speed will slow down to let more light in because I've, I've gone to a 5.6 from an F4 and it'll go to a 30th of a second. And what will happen is we'll get blurred shots. Because the shutter speed's too slow. Now, if you don't understand that, you would not acknowledge it at all. You might be in AV, you might have locked your ISO at 400, and you'd just go to a 5.6, take pictures, and not realise that your shutter speed has just gone down to a 30th of a second, and you're getting all blurred shots. And I've been out with photographers that have done that. And I've come back, they've come back with a lot of blurred shots. Now, and, and that'll be really understanding this if you understand this and how it works so let's say for instance i mean we will we'll jump to this setting actually for default because it's slightly a better setting so let's say we're at a wedding we're shooting these settings if everything's good we've got a decent iso we've got a good aperture and we've got a good shutter speed but we now decide we want to go to f8 so if we go to f8 and we read the number down here we're going to get more in focus but we're going to let in less light so once we go to f8 and so we stop down let me get it the right way because i usually get opening wide open and stopping down the wrong way around if we stop down and go to an f8 we're going to lose a stop of light so we can either gain it by putting the iso up to get that stop back from 800 to 16 or we can slow the shutter speed down but if you was in av again which a lot of people shoot in av i shoot in av a lot as well um, if you didn't actually, if you just left these settings locked in and just went to F8, your shutter speed would go down to a 60th on its own to compensate for that stop that you've just stopped down to. Um, and again, you'd end up with loads of large shots. So this is why I say it's critical to know these numbers. Now, don't look at this chart and think that all these numbers correspond with each other on that line because they don't you're only looking at the shutter speed the, that 
two fiftieth of a second don't correspond with F8. Do you know what I mean? It's just explaining how the numbers work. So let's say we was at. So let's say now, right? We're in AV. We're at ISO sixteen hundred. Forget the flash power. We are going to do the flash power in another video. Let's say we're taking these shots. We're in AV. We've we're an AV, we've locked the ISO in, say we're in manual ISO, it's at 1600, we're at F8, 250th of a second. But let's say we want to go to F22, because we want an infinite depth of field, right? So if we go to F22, that's one, two, three full stops of light that we're going to let less into the camera. So, I'm not going to move this because I can't really move it in here, but if I went to F22, we'd lose three stops. So, we can either go from 1600 to 32 to 64 to 1 to 8, which is definite no-no. So, we could go 1, 2, 3 stops on the shutter speed, which would help us, but again, that's 30th of a second, and I'd, I wouldn't want to handhold a shot at 30th of a second now if you had a tripod that'd be fine but on the other hand if you had a tripod you could put your iso to 50 and let the shutter speed do what it wants and even go down to a second it wouldn't matter but you can see how these numbers what i'm going to do is next time i'm out and about i'm going to shoot some pictures and actually tell you how these numbers are going to work now you're probably thinking to yourself well well uh, um why do I need to know them? And it's like I've just said, if you're at these settings here, and I'll say these settings here, and you need a better depth of field and you're in AV, you go to F8, your your shutter speed will drop down to a 60th, or if you go to F11, it'll drop to a 30th, and you need to know that in your head. Otherwise, your camera will just do it, and your camera will mess up for your shot for you, no problem. Your camera will give you 500 blurred shots and laugh at you, it ain't bothered. You need to know why, why, and what's going on so even though you're in av you need to think to yourself well you see let me just break this down if i started off with a shot here right here these settings i could without even looking at the camera knowing these numbers i could say right my iso is not going to change right i want to now go to an f14 which is one two it's three full stops letting more light in right so I know that three full stops is one, two, three. It's one five hundred of a second. And I could do that. I don't need this chart. I already know that myself. Once you know these numbers, you could actually just tilt your camera towards you, open the aperture to one four and put the shutter speed at five hundred of a second, if you know these numbers, and just take the shot without even looking at the back of the screen. And that's the idea. And especially when you start to use flash, let's just finish off on one and then I'm going to leave it. Let's go to the settings on flash. right? So now let's say we're doing a, a flash picture or mostly flash inside. And we've got the flash in manual. We've got it on a 16th power. And this, these are his settings. Let's say I want to go to F11. Right? So um, now we know that shutter speed doesn't affect flash. So we use the aperture or the ISO. So if I go to F11, it's one, it's two full stops. So I've got a lovely exposure here on these settings. I know I can just go to 11 and turn my flash up to 64th power. I mean, and this is without this chart. I don't need this chart. And I know that I'll get the self same exposure as I get getting here, apart from I'll have more depth of field. And that's what's great about it. Once you get somewhere and you're using flash, get yourself an exposure in manual, lock them settings in, and then if you want to, if you want to then go to an F2 from an F8, you can do it, and you can, you automatically know exactly how many stops to turn your flash down. You you won't be whereas before when I used to go from F5 6 say to F2, I'd go over to my flash in manual, although I can control it from back at camera now because I've got my Y and six double two C triggers. But you'd go over to the flash and you'd just turn it down to a couple of clicks, come back, take a shot, no, turn it down a couple more clicks, take a shot, no, and that's the thing. Once you know these numbers, you never have to do that again. All you have to do is get a base exposure for the flash, and once it's locked in, you can then work the rest out in your head. You can just work out, if you're going to go to F1.4, you can work out exactly what to do with your flash. You could even you could even be lazy if you wanted to. If you went to a 1.4, that's 1, 2, or an F2, that's three full stops. You could just whack your ISO down to 100 instead. 
instead of even going up to your flash. So you'd still have your flash on a 16th. Um, you'd be at ISO 100 F2. And that's the idea. Anyway, I won't go on any longer. If you want this chart, please send me an email. I did make it this morning, and I hope it's clear enough. Um, it would be quite handy to print it out and take it with you. But to be honest, there's no reason why you can't learn your aperture and your ISOs in 10 minutes. You should be able to say F1, F2, F3. You should be able to learn that in a day. Uh, in a day, in five minutes, you should be able to learn them aperture's. And the ISO, really, I mean, what is it, 50, 100? If you don't have ISO 50, forget about it. Just you learn from 100 to the ISOs that you've got. So if you've got 100 to 16, just remember them. 100, one full stop, 200, two, 400, another. And all it does is double. You can learn the ISO and the apertures really quick. It's just, and it's just your shutter speeds and your flash power that's a little bit more intense because you do have in in between points but if you learn this chart and i have put what each thing does you should absolutely be fantastic thanks for watching please comment and subscribe